Hi guys, Dane here with CVF Racing. We wanted to take some time today to show you some of our manufacturing processes, the inner workings of CVF, as well as some of the quality checks we take along the way. We just had a truck show up around back with a bunch of raw material. So uh, let's head back there and uh, check out the first step of the process. You can see one of our drivers unloading some of the raw material now. The blue paint at the end of the aluminum indicates a 6061 grade aluminum. We only use 6061 grade aluminum. If there was another color, it would be rejected and sent back. After the truck has been completely unloaded, the lift driver will then receive and sign the delivery sheet from the truck driver, verify all the materials received are correct and quantities are correct. We'll measure each piece individually and then write dimensions on each piece of stock for easy identification later on. The last step here is to now organize the newly received aluminum into their specific racking locations. Some of the material that was just delivered needs to move on to the next step in the process. So why don't you go ahead and follow us inside and we'll show you what happens next. It gets a little noisy in the shop, so bear with us on the audio. All of our machines run about a 95% utilization, which equates to about 23 and a half hours of runtime every day. We only shut down for services and part changes. Now that the material has made it inside and placed on its designated racking, the bands can be cut, then loaded on a crane and transported to a saw for cutting. Once one of the aluminum sticks are at the saw, the saw operator will then cut that stick into smaller chunks that we call slugs. The slugs will vary in size depending on what the final product is gonna be for that piece. The saw operator will then program the saw to cut a desired length and quantity for each length slug that is needed. Since the saw is completely automated, it doesn't need to be monitored by a machinist the whole time. This gives one of our machinists time to go set up one of the lathes that's gonna be used next in the process. And one of the tools that we use that's kinda of neat, and gives a lot of accuracy and precision, is a tool presetter. Let's go talk to one of our machinists now about how the presetter works and why we use it. Hey Joe. Hey. Today we're taking some time to show the people at home a little bit about our uh, machining process. So can you take us through the Coma tool presetter and let us know how that works? Yeah. This is basically an off-machine off presetter that we use. Our machines have presetters in them, but because of the, the environment that they're in, sometimes that they might get bumped around from cleaning or just the machining process. So we use an off-machine off uh, presetter that uh, is a lot more accurate to it. So basically what we're trying to do is measure from that lip to the end of the tool. And we can do that while the machine's running so it saves time on here. So basically we're putting the machine, we can either do that in the lathe or the mill. Uh, this is for the mill. Basically what we're looking for is that height. So once it gets in there, we can turn it, it kind of automatically went to that height and we can get exactly what that measurement is within tenths. Once we got that, put the tool number in there and we can actually print that out. So once you have that, you have your dimension on there, you can take that with the tool and take it back to the machine and put the offset in. Hey Joe. Let's see if we have some plugs cut, ready to load on the lathe. After the saw has finished cutting the raw material to slugs, the slugs will then be loaded onto a bread cart and wheeled over to a lathe. When the bread cart's rolled in a place, it'll be locked in with a bolt on one corner and then two jam nuts on the back. This ensures that the cart is in the same position every time. It helps the robot arm understand where each slug is going to be every time. After the cart's locked in place, the machine operator can go set up the machine. Each part that is being run has a barcode that will be scanned. That barcode holds all kinds of information like the tooling pass that will be used, the tools used, this eliminates the possibility of a machinist fat fingering a program that would be run for this particular product or using an old revision of some kind. Once the barcode is scanned and loaded into the program, the operator can go ahead and start the machine and get the process started. We're gonna go ahead and let this machine run. Let's go check out another lathe that's a little further along and making some parts. We'll talk about our one and done process. All right guys, you'll see this machine here has already ran a few parts. When the first part is completed, 
It's then pulled out and checked at a few critical dimensions. That could be something as simple as, uh, like for this instance, threading the fittings on to make sure they thread on correctly, uh, checking tolerances, or actually fitting it onto the part that it would go onto to make sure everything's correct. This one and done process, the robot head is gonna take apart, chuck it up in the lathe head. It's gonna go through its first operation. When it's time for the second operation, the robot arm will then move from one lathe head to the next lathe head inside of this machine. The tools will change and then it will run its second operation. So as this machine's running through its process, you'll notice no operators needed. It knows how to just do its thing as, as it's programmed. If something wants to go wrong during this process, there's some things that we track and tolerances we set that the, will shut the machines down. Or we have the option to send a, a text message to our machine operators. We also have a system in place that can be monitored from home or from here at work to watch what all the machines are doing at all times. Uh, some of those feedbacks we're looking at is how long it takes to make a part, or we can watch how much horsepower the motor is taking to operate on a certain tool. We'll know that maybe a tool had broken or maybe some metal shavings that got wrapped up around a tool causing extra load. Either way, that's a signal that can get sent to one of our machinists. So having this data exchange system in place allows these machines to run unattended even when no one's in the entire building. So as long as there's parts and trays and bread carts here for this robot to run, it's gonna run through every single piece. That allows us to set these things up heavy with load Friday night when we go home, and then Monday morning when we come back into work, they're all done, ready to go. After the last part has been completed, the machine will shut down automatically. Once the machine shut down, one of our machinists will be notified via text message or it could be an email. Uh, he'll then come over, check the last part, make sure it's identical to the first part, taking those same measurements, whether it's a critical dimension on that part or it's test fitting one of the pieces and components. Once everything's approved there, we know all the parts in between are good. Uh, these parts can then be brought into a polishing area. Uh, but before we go there, let's go to one of our milling operations. It's gonna be a little bit different setup than the two lathing operations we've already showed you. This mill is what we use here for our black diamond finish. Any parts that we have coming back from black anodizing that are gonna be turned into black diamond are all gonna come here. Each part is gonna have its own specific fixture and program to run on this machine. When each part is loaded onto its fixture, it's located with screws, pins, dowels, or any combination of those three. Once the fixture is then loaded into the machine, a probe will then check the part for a few locations to ensure that it's in the correct position for accuracy. If for some reason, the accuracy or location of one of those parts was incorrect, the machine would stop there. If it's approved as in a good location, the machine would then go ahead and complete the rest of the machining process. The black diamond process only takes off an extremely small amount of material, basically just removing the anodizing to show the polished aluminum underneath. Once the part has been completed, the machine will then remove that tray or that fixture back out of the machine. The parts can be cleaned and then sent off to polishing. Let's head over to another mill and see our one and done start to finish process there. Behind me, you'll see two of our milling operations. The robot arm that's behind me is gonna operate both machines at the exact same time. Uh, this keeps things running pretty efficiently. Both of these mills, as well as the rest of our machines, are gonna go through a daily calibration. For that, we use a Renishaw probe. The probe will check calibration on any of the tools that we ran for the programs that are being done that day. So every day is a calibration on every machine independently. After the calibration process has been complete, a machine can go through its daily operations. That'll start with an operator loading one of the pallets. A pallet can hold anywhere between two and four parts. All of the raw aluminum going onto the pallets are loaded manually. Those pallets are then loaded into their specific locations that you'll see on the racking behind me. Every racking location has got an RFID tag and a program that's assigned to that location. That way the machine knows what program to run when that pallet is then loaded into the machine. As the mill's running through its process, every time it's finished using that tool, it's checked for a break detection. This ensures that the machining process on each part is gonna be up to our standards. If a tool was to break, you'd have chattered edges, rough edges, uh, machining tolerances could be tall or low, depending on how a break may or may not have happened. Once a pallet of parts has completed its machining process, that pallet will then be set back in its designated location in the racking area. Uh, the next pallet will be selected, put back into the machine, 
and it will continue to run this process until everything's done for its cycle that day. It could be a 24 hour run or a weekend run, as many pallets and parts as we tell it to do for that day. Throughout the day, the machinist will still need to unload finished parts. So in between runs on those two machines and the robot arm sitting idle, a machine operator can then take those pallets down, and unload them, reload new parts. Once those parts are unloaded, they go through a measurement check. Uh, so let's go talk to one of our machinists now who's unloading some parts and find out a little bit more about that. Hey, Lindsay. Hi. Looks like you got a pallet full of completed parts here. Tell me about some of the checks that you're taking now that these parts are done. So when I reload, unload this part here, um, I'm looking for surface finish. Uh, I've got the engraving and our logo on here. Um, I've got no sharp edges. And once I'm done looking it over, doing the visual inspection, I'm going to take it into our inspection room and I'm going to use our roamer arm to check for some critical dimensions and check some thread depths and yep. make sure it looks good. What happens if one of these parts doesn't meet our quality standards or misses some of the critical dimensions? Uh, if it's something I can fix on my own, I'll bring it back to the machine and I'll check some tools, make sure our tools are looking good. If not, I would bring it back to the engineering department and they would fix it up and I would throw it in the scrap bin. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Lindsay. Thanks. Yep. We got a rack of completed brackets that can head over to our polishing area, which is gonna be the next step in our process. So follow me as we head that way. All finished parts are gonna to go to this area, whether they came off a mill or a lathe. From here, they'll get unloaded from these racks and set into our tumbler. The tumbler is gonna do a polishing process on every single part and piece. Parts of the temple will go in as parts that have already completed their tumbling process are coming out. The parts that just came out and finished tumbling will then go into racks to then run through our sonic cleaning rinse with a distilled water and light acid mix. The sonic cleaner uses a high vibration sound wave to help break up any chemical and debris. After the parts have sat in the sonic cleaner for a set amount of time, it will then move into the next rinse bath, which is just a clean distilled water bath. Lastly, the parts are lifted out, cleaned off with cool, clean, distilled water, and then air dried. Trent, what's up? So once all these parts hit the table, they've finished their polishing process, they've gone through the rinse and clean, what are we looking for next? So as soon as the parts hit our table over here, we have somebody over here checking the quality of them, checking to see if they have any scratches, dents, or dings. Uh, we polish them up to the best of our ability. If we're not able to fix it, then we foam them up, box them up, and send them to scratching deck. So how does the boxing process work? So first thing that we do is we look at the part number on the back of the part. We bring it over to our system and see if it gets any bolts or other hardware. And then we would bring it right back over here, foam it up. We measure it to see what size box it gets, make a bunch of boxes, put all the, the parts and the hardware in the boxes, slap labels on there, and bring it over to shipping. So what kind of information is on the labels? So it has the part number, it has a brief description of what the part actually is, it has the date that the, the part was packaged, and then it has the initials of the person who checked it for quality. And that helps us track it through the process, understand the dates when everything's done, just any kind of quality issues down the road. Yep. Cool. All right, guys, let's head over to shipping, see last up the process and how stuff goes out the door. Back here is our finished goods and shipping area. All the finished packaged parts are gonna get inventoried in their desired location here in the warehouse. And then over on the shipping side, as orders come in, they're gonna get printed out in the printer. Uh, that printed list is gonna have a complete pack list of everything that goes into that order. Um, every item's gonna have a barcode. So as they're pulling parts from the location, they're scanning that barcode to make sure that it is the exact part for that order. Once that order is complete, it will then be brought over to the computer so all parts can be scanned in to ensure that the order is complete with all the correct parts. Hey, Mel. Hey, Dan. Looks like you got an order completed here and ready to go. Could you tell us a little bit about the picking process and what kind of steps you're taking here? Yeah, so after we print out and we get it picked, we um, scan it through our system to make sure it's correct before we're, we can send it out. What happens if you scan the part incorrectly or you pick the wrong part? The computer stops us from continuing scanning, so we make sure to double check it, fix it if we did pick it wrong, just make sure it's correct. So there's fail saves in place and stop the incorrect parts from getting packaged. Yes. What happens when everything's complete? Um, so I'll take it over and I'll box it up and then I'll send it on to get put on the scale and shipped out. And we ship internationally and domestically with multiple carriers. Shipping in the U.S. is always free on orders over $200 and a flat rate shipping of $9.85 for orders under $200. Yes. 
After the package has been weighed, sealed, and labeled, you will head on down the line. Thanks, Mel. Let's follow some boxes out the door. This is going to be the end of the line. I hope you've enjoyed seeing some of our quality checks and some of the processes we take in our manufacturing process. Those quality checks and processes keep us ISO 9001 certified. Uh, we take a lot of pride in every single part that we make so we can provide the highest quality kits for you guys. From here, everything that's been boxed up today is gonna head out the door. Our parcel carriers will then pick up from this location, load their trucks, and start heading to you. We really appreciate you guys watching today. Don't forget, we back all of our products with our lifetime warranty and world-class tech support right here in New Prague, Minnesota.